Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and in this particular video I am going to focus on the differences between the kinases and phosphatases. I have detailed videos on kinases, uh, detailed videos on phosphatases and I'll share the link in the description uh, but the scope of this particular video is to focus on the differences between the kinases and the phosphatases. Now these kinases and phosphatases, as I've told you in my previous video, that they are very important enzymes that regulate the cell signaling mechanisms in living organisms. So the first difference between the uh, kinases and the phosphatases is that kinases, they are going to add a phosphate group to proteins or other molecules. And this particular phenomena of addition of a phosphate group to a protein or molecule is known as the phosphorylation. On the other hand, these phosphatases, they are going to remove the phosphate groups from uh, particular proteins or molecules that have already been attached with the phosphate group. So the phosphatases are going to remove those phosphate groups attached to those proteins and molecules. And this particular phenomena of removal of the phosphate group from protein or molecules that is known as the dephosphorylation. So as we are talking about the phosphate, uh, whether their addition or their uh, removal. So what is a phosphate group? Now if you talk about the phosphate group, this phosphate group it looks like this and this is actually a functional group which is characterized by a phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygen atoms. As you can see in this particular image there is a phosphorus atom and that has been attached to four oxygen molecules. Now three of the bonds, uh, this one, this one and this one, they are single bonds and there is one uh, double bond uh, with the oxygen. So this is the uh, phosphate group. So the kinases, they are going to add this phosphate group. The phosphatases, they are going to remove this phosphate group. The second difference between the kinases and the phosphatases is that the kinases, they belong to a class of the enzyme known as the transferases. Now these transferases, they are actually enzymes that catalyze the transfer of a functional group uh, for example, a methyl group or a phosphate group from one molecule, uh, which is called is the donor, to another molecule, which is called is the acceptor. So the uh, kinases, they belong to this particular class of the transferases, and they are specifically phosphotransferases, because they are going to add a phosphate group from the donor to the uh, acceptor. And I'll give you an example of this donor and acceptor in a while. When you talk about the phosphatases, the phosphatases, they are actually, uh, they belong to the class of enzyme known as the hydrolase. And these hydrolase that uh, uses water to break a chemical bond. In this particular case, the removal of the phosphate group. So when you talk about this uh, transferase enzyme, as I've told you, there is a donor. So in case of the uh, kinases, the donor that is ATP. So the ATP, the adenosine triphosphate, is going to donate a phosphate group. So this would be the donor and the acceptor would be the uh, molecule or the proteins to which the phosphate group is attached. So you have got this donor, so ATP would be a donor and the acceptor would be the protein or the uh, molecule which is receiving the uh, phosphate group. When you talk about these uh, transferases, they actually use water molecules to transfer the hydroxyl group and when they transfer the hydroxyl group the end result is that the phosphate group is removed from those particular proteins or molecules. I'll show you that in the uh, end of the video how this works. The uh, uh, fourth difference between the phosphatases and the uh, uh, kinases is that there are different types of the kinases and there are different types of the phosphatases. When you talk about the types of the kinases, the first and the most important type of the kinases, they are known as the protein kinases. So as the name indicate, these kinases, they are going to add a phosphate group to proteins. Therefore, they are called as the uh, protein kinases. And depending on which amount of acid in substrate protein is phosphorylated, these protein kinases are classified into different classes. The first class that is known as the tyrosine kinases. So, as the name indicate, this particular class of the molecule, this particular class of the kinases, are going to add a phosphate group on the tyrosine residue uh, in a particular protein or a molecule. 
The second class they are known as the serine threonine kinases. So these would be the kinases that are going to add a phosphate group to the serine residue or the threonine residue in the target protein or the molecules. So uh, they, this means that this particular, uh, you can say, uh, name of the amino acid, they're actually specifying the uh, target of these kinases. The third type, they are known as the dual specificity kinases. They are called as the dual specificity kinases because they can phosphorylate both the tyrosines, the serines, and the threonines. So here, this particular class, they, are, they can only phosphorylate the tyrosine. This particular class can only phosphorylate the serine and threonine. So as these kinases, they have got dual specificity. They can uh, phosphorylate the tyrosine. They can phosphorylate the serine and threonine as well. Therefore, they are called is the dual specificity kinases. The fourth type of the kinases, they are known as the histidine kinases. And as the name indicate, these kinases are going to add a phosphate group to the histidine amino acid uh, in the target protein or molecule. If you talk about the uh, opposite of these protein kinases, they are known as the protein phosphatases. Now, uh, I hope you are going to get, you are getting the idea how the kinases and the phosphatases, they are working. So the phosphatases, so as you are talking about the protein phosphatases, so these phosphatases are going to remove the phosphate group from the proteins. And depending on which amino acid a protein uh, phosphatase can dephosphorylate, uh, these uh, protein phosphatases are classified into different classes. For example, the first type they are known as the tyrosine phosphatases. So this will be the opposite of the tyrosine kinases. The tyrosine kinases add a phosphate group to the tyrosine. The tyrosine phosphatases remove a phosphate group from the tyrosine. Similarly, the serine threonine phosphatases. So this phosphatase is going to remove the phosphate group from the serine and the threonine. And you talk about these dual specificity phosphatases. So as the name indicate, they are going to dephosphorylate the uh, phosphotyrosine. That means those particular tyrosines to which a phosphate group has already been added. They can also dephosphorylate the phosphoserine, the serine to which a phosphate group has been added. Or they can also dephosphorylate the uh, phosphotreonine. The last type of the protein phosphatases, they are known as the histidine phosphatases. So as the name indicate, these phosphatases are going to remove the phosphate group from the histidine to which a phosphate group has been added. So these protein kinases and these protein phosphatases, they are working in opposition to each other. Uh, the other types of the kinases uh, and the phosphatases that include the, uh, when you talk about the kinases, they are known as the lipid kinases. As the name indicates, these kinases are going to add phosphate group to the uh, lipid moieties. Uh, for example, if I give you the example from this particular class of the kinases, uh, one is known as the phosphatidyl inositol kinases, and the other one is known as the spingocene uh, uh, kinase. So, as the name indicates, these kinases are going to add phosphate group to the phosphatidyl inositol over here, and this kinase is going to add a phosphate group to the uh, uh, spingocene. The opposite of the lipid kinases, they are the lipid phosphatases. So as the name indicates, they are going to remove the phosphate group from the uh, lipid. So these lipid phosphatases, they can actually dephosphorylate the uh, phospholipids. And phospholipids are actually the lipids to which a phosphate group that has been added. If I give you an example from this particular class, so there's the phosphatase, uh, the uh, phosphatidyl inositol, 3, 4, 5 trace phosphate that is a very important you can say molecule in the cellular signaling and a phosphatase can actually remove the phosphate group from the phosphatidyl inositol 3, 4, 5 trace phosphate. The third type of the kinases they are known as the carbohydrate kinases that means the kinases that are going to add a phosphate group to the carbohydrate molecules for example the hexokinase and the phosphofructokinase. These are actually the, uh, some of the examples from the carbohydrate uh, kinase class of the, uh, uh, you can say, kinases. The opposite of the carbohydrate kinases, they are known as the carbohydrate phosphatases. So these carbohydrate phosphatases are going to remove the phosphate group from phosphorylated sugars. For example, the glucose 6-phosphatase that act on the glucose 6-phosphate to produce glucose, especially in the uh, breakdown of the glycogen. The last type of the kinases, they are known as the nucleoside kinases. And as the name indicates, these kinases are going to act on the nucleosides. So the nucleoside phosphate kinase, 
and the nucleotide diphosphate kinases these are the two major kinases in this particular class of the in this particular class which are involved in the phosphorylation of nucleosides and the nucleotides the opposite of the nucleoside kinase they are known as the uh, nucleotidases and these nucleotidases are actually a type of the phosphatases that catalyze the hydrolysis of the nucleotides forming the uh, nucleotides when you talk about these phosphatases the most important of the uh, phosphatases uh, they are the protein phosphatases is they are very important in physiological relevance uh, just to give you a brief overview how the uh, mechanism of the kinases and the phosphatases work i have detailed description on that in my videos and i'll share the link in the description but simply over here as you can see uh, if this is a threonine uh, a serine threonine kinase is going to act on this and you can see over here there is a hydroxyl group so this serine threonine kinase is going to add a phosphor group over here by removing this hydrogen from here and adding a phosphor group over here and when you talk about the uh, threonine phosphatases which will work in opposite of the uh, threonine kinases as you can see over here the threonine phosphatase that is going to use the uh, water molecule it is going to uh, remove you can say uh, the phosphate group from this particular position it is going to add the hydrogen over here and it is going to add this hydroxyl group to the phosphate thereby the threonine that would again be converted into the uh, uh, you can say uh, b phosphorylated form similarly when you talk about the uh, serine threonine kinase so this serine over here in this particular case it is going to add a phosphate group over here when the serine phosphatase come it is going to use water over here and that is going to add a hydrogen over here thereby removing the phosphate group so as you can see over here the serine threonine kinases they would be using the atp as a source of the phosphate group the phosphatases that would be using the water to remove the phosphate group from the uh, phosphorylated uh, serine or threonine or tyrosines or the histidine so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and share with you to your friends. I'll see you in the next video.